Okay, and welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Joe Medley. So Joe, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure, um, you know, I, I'm the son of a high school dropout, uh, only the first person in my family to ever graduate with a four-year degree. So education is important to me. Um, went into teaching, taught history at the middle and high school level, have been a principal in, in a charter as well as in a traditional school, spent time with working with the Department of Education. And uh, most recently, I had ended up opening a virtual school uh, five years ago, and this year moved into a different role with K-12, where I'm the Director of Leadership Development and provide training for all of the school leaders across the country in our network. Okay, so now you've been a, a school leader in the brick and mortar and in the virtual environment for a number of years, and um, most folks have a, a routine that they have for, you know, opening up a school year and closing down a school year, but this year we've had this sort of big disruption that has happened, and it's going to mean things are going to have to be done differently. Uh, so what advice would you have for school leaders on things that they should be thinking about as they close out this year and look to start the coming year? So the, the biggest piece of advice that I can come up with, and I want to focus on closing out this year, is this. It's that one word of reflect. You know, you, you need to reflect to ensure that there is a response for next year rather than a reaction to what happened this past year. It's always that forward-looking piece. You know, and, and I would look at it this way, Michael. Really, you need to ask three questions. The first one is the optimism question of what went well, because things did go well this year. You know, it wasn't what we all planned. It was a curveball that was thrown our way, but there are positives and we need to make sure that we, we embrace those and document. The second question is the pessimism question, which what needs improvement? Um, and then third one, my personal favorite is the realism question. What do I need to learn right now to be prepared for what could be coming next year? And I wanna take that and apply that in a very specific area, one that is near and dear to my heart is think about those brand new teachers. This is their first year. They had visions of grandeur, what their classrooms were gonna look like, how they were gonna have a bulletin board theme all throughout the year. And it got shut down, depending on where you were across the country at, at certain times. But those teacher mentors that work with those new teachers and the principals of those schools that have them really need to get one-on-one -on -one time with those new teachers and help them process. It's not a wasted year. There's tremendous things that they did, and they need to see that to have the proper mindset going forward. Now, you mentioned what's coming. Um, you know, the nature of pandemics are there are likely to be multiple waves. Uh, as states are starting to open up now, we're likely to see uh, local flare-ups. So it's quite possible that either individual school districts or maybe entire states or you know, even potentially the entire country could shut down again. What should school leaders be thinking about and preparing over the summer and in the early parts of next year for the next time something like this has happens because it's likely going to? That is a great question, and I want to approach it in two ways. The first way is more of what I'm going to call a plan, and then the second piece is the program. So let's talk about the plan. Three words, decide, determine, develop. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of times we will talk things to death. We don't have time for that. Uh, school will start very soon. I mean, once you start, you're getting ready for the next year. So we've got to move to that decision point. Then once that decision has been made on what you're going to do, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute, we need to get to the determination, the belief, the heart that we know we're going to make a difference, and then we develop. And I look at it this way as a progression. The decide, it's thinking. The, the aspect of determination, that's your heart, that's believing, and the development is your hands. So the progression is head, heart, hands. Better thinking leads to better believing, and together they create better doing. So that's the plan side of this. Now let's get into the actual program. Number one, you need to be thinking about your course. Are you gonna plan for a, a soft opening using virtual just for one month, for one quarter, for a full semester, for the full year? Obviously, we don't know what we're going to see from each individual state, but you need to be creating those kinds of contingency plans down the road. Now, part of that course is going to require you to look at content. School leaders and teachers need to get together and figure out what is the most important things that those students need to learn. In each of those phases, if we're going to have openings where it's going to be one month only virtual or where it's going to be a full quarter. 
So a leader's you know, main responsibility is to define reality, and it's got to be able to pare that down. But thirdly is communication. This includes both with teachers and families, but I want to focus on the family part of this. You know, I, I have two kids that attend a virtual school, but I also had a child that was in a brick and mortar school that had to come home uh, with everything that happened. And school leaders cannot overlook the fact that they need to train their families. You can't just give them a computer. You can't just give them a Wi-Fi hotspot and say, good luck. You've got to give them specifics. Things like, don't have your student doing their work on their bed. What's going to happen? The kid's going to go to sleep. Or uh, what I call the one space, one use rule. Try to set up as much as possible an area that is academic only. So when they come to that spot, they are focused on the academics. They're not thinking about other things. I love headphones over the ears because it cancels out noise and things that are taking place. But make sure you're checking up on your kid that has the headphones on all day. Are they listening to music? Are they really doing their schoolwork? And the other thing, again, that schools need to make sure that they're really training their families with is what I call show and tell. Now, this is not what elementary kids do where they take their favorite thing and they show it to their, you know, their class. But you ask your student, hey, did you do your work? And they say, sure. Ask them to show it to you. We know they're kids. Sometimes they're going to stretch the truth and other times they're going to outright not tell the truth. But you've got to make sure that you bridge that. But the key, the most important thing that schools need to teach families and communicate to them is if you see them wrestling with a difficult math problem or a long reading passage, let them struggle. It's okay. That's how they grow. That's how they learn. That's how they develop. And for parents, that's often hard, but schools need to make sure they're communicating those kinds of things to families. Fourthly, school culture. You know, we, we could talk a lot about school culture, but you can take the things that you do to build a physical brick and mortar school culture and translate it over to virtual. You just do it differently. You know, whether you're leveraging Facebook Live uh, whether you're sending video messages out to your families, but you have the responsibility to build that culture during that time. And the last thing, as you're planning for next year, whether it's that one month, one quarter, one semester, or however long it's going to be, and this is a critical one, and it's going to involve legal counsel with your individual districts, but you need to pick up your school crisis plans and you need to look at them. We know about the mandated reporting we know that teachers are trained to, to spot you know, students that have gone through abuse and how you respond to that. Well, we need to think about that differently in the virtual world. If you have that child in a class connect session, you've got the camera up where they're able to be able to hear what's going on in the background and you as a teacher see something that happens, they need to know how to respond. So school leaders, central office teams, legal counsel, you've got to get together to really start having those conversations to prepare for what may be coming, you know, in, in the future. But again, it goes back to those three words. You've got to decide, you've got to determine, and then you've got to go to develop. Because again, better thinking leads to better believing, and together they create better doing. So those are the pieces of advice that I would quickly give to anyone uh, that is thinking about that within the fall. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Joel. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Joel Medley.